Welcome to Oxford. Thank you very much for bringing this beautiful weather from the United States. <laughs> What's your impression about Oxford? This is a wonderful place. Um, I have so much history. It's, it's, it's so interesting. It's really just a great place to visit. These days, a lot of people keep saying that they don't know what to expect. Uh, and uh, the world is spinning. What's mm -hmm. your advice to young people in these difficult times? You have to be open to new ideas and new challenges. I think we're going to see a lot of change. Uh, clearly, from a financial standpoint, we're going into a period where I think there's going to be less public funding, less money available for things that are not directly product related, and you're going to have to be more creative. When I started as a patent attorney, it was in response in part to a similar situation back in the early 80s when there was no money for, for nonprofit research. And while it was interesting and wonderful, we didn't yet have startup companies. We didn't have a lot of things that we have now. And so the options were limited. And that was why I went into patent law. I got to combine the best of everything. I got to do research and meet with people and learn about new stuff and help people develop their technologies. So it was something I never could have predicted. And I think that's probably one, in one reason why I was successful was I didn't say, oh, there's no money, I can't do anything. I just said, ah, it's an opportunity, I'll try it, I'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. It's a great way for people to approach things. Yeah, really, in life, crisis is an opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention, and there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. Being open to new ideas, new ways to approach things. Mm -hmm. You've just uh, talked about your experiences. I think it will be very, very valuable to young people. Okay, how can young people flourish in our post-Brexit and post-Trump world? I think there's going to be a lot of cuts in research funding um, and funding for schools. Well, I think in, in Brexit, there's a lot of money that was coming into the UK that's not going to come in. That, that's a given. In the United States, Trump has stated that in his proposed budget, he's cutting funding to things like the National Institutes of Health. He is increasing funding, Department of Energy, Department of Defense. If Congress passes his budget, we're going to see a shifting of resources. In some ways, that may actually create more opportunity because Department of Defense, Department of Energy fund a lot of research and create a lot of jobs, not just in uh, technology, not just in, say, weapons, but also in things like aerospace and in uh, communications and in medicine. A lot of the work that's being done right now in the United States at the universities that's medically related is funded actually through Department of Defense, a number of our clients. Then when you look at where the grant money is coming from. I don't know if there's an equivalent to that in, in the UK. I think most of the people I've spoken to are very concerned that they're simply going to lose funding and nothing's going to replace it. And that's a problem. They may have to take and look at other places. Based on our experience in hiring people from the UK to come in and do patent work, um, they got a great education. Of course, they went to Oxford. Um, got a great education, very smart. They know how to think. They know how to analyze. They know how to write. Those are skills that translate into jobs Those, and provide opportunity, whether it's in a startup company or whether it's in a field like ours in the intellectual property, legal field, um, and the business side. So facing the new world, young people should have variety of experiences, I think. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. In my opinion, the most important thing is to know how to think, mm -hmm. analyze, organize, mm -hmm. and articulate. Very, very important skills. If you look at the majority of people, they do not have these skills. Mm -hmm. So if you have that skill set, you right up front start out better than most people, and you have a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. There are jobs. There's a lot of opportunity right now. Well, actually, you were just interviewed by Professor Dennis Noble. Uh, after, soon after he heard the news about Brexit, he cried. Yeah. But next day, he just kept going. So his advice to young people all the time, keep going. Yeah. So we have to admit what exists in front of us, correct? I really think that anytime there's a problem, it creates a need. 
And so you have a problem now with, with Brexit, with funding, and it will create needs, and that need is opportunity. Yeah. Just a matter of going for it. Mm. Being able to go outside what we call outside the box, look at new ideas, take new approaches, not be afraid. The worst you can ever do is fail. Mm. There are worse things than failure. Mm. We have a president that failed business-wise seven times, and yet he made president of the United States. Failure's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a learning experience. And if you succeed, you know, there's no limit to what you can do. So your advice to young people, I really appreciate that. Any advice to global leaders? <laughs> no. You know, the, um, for example, I remember the late President Ronald Reagan. When he was uh, elected, oh, actor was elected, oh, we'll see. But after all, he was a very good listener and uh, he hired uh, lots of good people. Yes. So as a consequence of that, he is now known as the most respected president in the United States, followed by Lincoln, President Lincoln. I read the news. I really hope all these global leaders uh, who, who are always talked about in the world, I hope they will be very good listeners to their colleagues, to their people. What do you think? I think that's a wonderful approach, and I hope that they are. So a good leader is a good listener. Yes. Yeah. If you had been a teenager yourself now, would you have taken much notice of the current situation? I think people are very aware now. When I was a teenager, we didn't have all the social media. We didn't have the internet. It was very different. Mm. Now you're so inundated and it's very hard to filter out what's real, what's important, and which is noise. Mm. It's one of the biggest problems I see today is how do you know what's real and important versus what's just noise? That's a challenge for everybody, but particularly for teenagers. Keep challenging young people even with the uncertainty yes. in this world. Thank you very much. Thank you.